preseason drones, and cedar scrape kings. There's just a lot of preseason work that goes into hunting if you're gonna actually manage your farm and try to kill big deer. Well, I've had the tractor in less than an hour and we're putting it into some good use. You plant spring food plots, you plant fall food plots, spraying the food plots, liming the food plots, fertilizing the food plots. We think about it, we strategize how to get to and from the stands, when we're gonna hunt these deer, what times of the year, what food sources, all that plays into the management plan. What are some of your most trusted preseason strategies? What's worked, what hasn't? I'm Matt Dre, and this is another installment of DOD TV. This edition of DOD TV is brought to you by Scent Crusher. Scent off, game on. You guys remember Tom Ware, right? I mean, he is kind of hard to forget. The DOD team member that lays down giant Midwestern whitetails episode after episode here on YouTube. But how does he do it? In this edition of DOD TV, we join Tom Ware and his friends as they share a little insight on how they go about managing their properties. There's just a ton that goes into managing. People think uh, this is just easy, you can go out and shoot big deer whenever you want, but there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, luckily, I have a lot of friends, we're all passionate about deer hunting and we're passionate about management of deer. Quadcopter, Mr. Manifold, let's go. To be able to actually grow up with a deer is kind of fun. You get to see him go from a two to a three-year-old, three to a four, four to a five, five to a six, and uh, there's just a lot more that goes into the management. We have to spray the food plots year-round to make sure the weeds aren't in them. We have to strategically place the food plots in different areas, make sure we're putting in the right food. But first, we have to do the burn. It takes a couple years for switchgrass to get going. So this year we decided let's burn it and we know that's gonna give it a lot of fertilizer to grow and it sure did, it took off. For those of you that have your own ground, switchgrass is a great grass to plant because it keeps you hidden just like the deer like it. We like it to be able to get to our stands. This is what it looks like after spring burn. We burned it this spring and it just comes up, look at that. It's gotta be seven, eight foot tall. Uh, it just comes back thick. Deer love it, and we love it, so give it a try. One of the things I like to do on my farm uh, as of the last few years is, first of all, I like to plant a lot of Biologic Clover Plus. The great thing about biologics is they have so many different food sources to choose from, so we can plant two food sources close to one another. You know, maybe we're gonna plant a clover on this one, we're gonna plant radishes over here. We feel that it kind of spreads them out. Well, it's August 13th and it's a hot one. And we got trucks and tractors, we are ready. We got tons of biologic seed, we got radishes, we got maximum, and we are planting. It seems like every food plot has one king, and that's what we've noticed. So what we've decided to do is we actually make smaller food plots, maybe half acre, quarter acre, three quarters of an acre. We try to keep them under a full acre and then we make more of them. So that way you can actually have more kings that live on your farm. Well, we just planted this field today and cold pack the seed in. We got biologic maximum in here, some radishes. I'm gonna put this uh, Reconyx out. On my farms, we try to set up uh, the food plots on the perimeters of the farm so we can access those farms with the right wind. We can sneak in through the switchgrass or sneak in through an area where they're not gonna be bedded and then they're gonna hit those food plots. And you know what? I center almost all my hunting now around food. There we have it. We got a good travel corridor right through here. There's two ponds right up here. It goes right between them. We're gonna have a great food plot right here. Cedars, big timber to the south. We're gonna hunt it with a southwest wind blower wind right over the crappie pond. Season's about a month and a half away, I can't wait. In Iowa and in Missouri, you can actually feed. We put out analogics. It's amazing what it's done to the growth of the antlers on the deer. Tastes pretty good. <laughs> we've seen two-year-olds that have stickers on them and we've never seen, all of a sudden they're getting forks and extra junk. It just makes the deer healthy, and I think with healthy deer, you're gonna get antler size. Not only are we getting great pictures from the Reconyx, 
but we're actually keeping our deer healthy. So that's what I like about it. Well, it's uh, August 28th. We're here on my farm in Missouri. This is the same food plot I was telling you about earlier. We sprayed it first, then mowed it, tilled it, fertilized it, and planted it with uh, biologic maximum and radishes. Now I'm gonna put that, uh, I got a new muddy redemption ground blind. I'm gonna set it right here. We should be able to see deer come from that big timber here and over this way. So it should be a good setup. I don't use ground blinds a lot, but we're gonna try her out. <laughs> Doesn't like the outtakes. Turn it off. I tell you what, I gotta thank Reconyx. Reconyx is honestly one of my favorite sponsors because you get to see the deer that are on your farm that you might never see in real life. And I gotta give credit to Scott Manifold. He's a new Drury teammate. And I tell you what, he had a great idea with the new Reconyx Ultra Fire. That's the coolest thing in the world or what? I have a, an old post on my farm, the cedar post. It's been there for years. It's actually like an hourglass. It's rubbed down so there's only about a quarter of a post in the middle where they've been rubbing their antlers. Every year you go down and find shavings under the pole where they'd rub their antlers on it. It's pretty cool stuff. You get to watch it throughout the years. Helps out my golf swing. Scott behind the camera there had an idea of putting up a Reconic, putting it on video mode, and we're actually gonna try to capture the buck breaking it. That's our goal. You know, and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, we might get lucky and see a, a few bucks. Oh my gosh, the number of bucks that came by and rubbed that pole is unbelievable. Well, it's September 16th. We've been seeing some rubs. We thought, hey, let's go check our rubbing pole, see if they've knocked it over yet. It only had about an inch left of pole, so we're hopefully gonna get lucky. Can you see it? There, there it is. You yeah. just see the top of it. Let's go look at it. Unbelievable. That is awesome. That's awesome. It's kind of sad. We watched this pull for many, many years. That's amazing. Well, let's pull the card. Now we're gonna go check the computer, see if we got it on video. The pole was knocked over, so I checked the camera. I had set it on the wrong settings. First time I used the camera, it's actually a 30 second on and then one minute off. So now we have a 33% chance of us getting the buck, knocking the pole over on film. So we don't know if we're gonna catch him actually pushing it over or it's gonna be during the minute delay, he pushes it over and we don't catch it. So this is kind of uh, interesting. We're, we're, we're hoping we catch it. Hey, Mr. Raccoon, get off our pole. <laughs> is this gonna be it? Oh, that's not. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Have to wait for the next one. Uh oh, here comes one. That's a buck I call mushroom. I found both the sheds during mushroom season. That's pretty cool. I'm going through each clip saying, okay, the pole's still there, and I have to watch 30 seconds, and I, I'm thinking that, you know, chances are against us, we don't have it on film. All of a sudden, oh, oh there he did it. He got it. <laughs> Woo we got it. That was awesome. Right at the very end there. Well, the great thing about it is we actually see that buck during the season, and hence we named him Pole Knocker. Yeah, that's a buck we call Pole Knocker. And so we see him come out in this clover plot, and we got to see him. He wasn't a deer we are gonna harvest this year, but the best thing about that hunt, I see one of the best turkey fights I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm telling you, this thing is wicked. My neck hurts after that, oh my gosh. I've never seen anything like that, that's pretty cool. That's what I like about hunting, you get to experience more than a big deer. And you get to see all kinds of part of nature. 
awesome. Hopefully Tom Ware can round out this story at Pull Knocker in the years to come. What's the biggest scrape site you've ever seen? I mean, are we talking like car hood here? Comment below and let us know the kind of activity you're seeing in your area. Thanks for watching another installment of DOD TV, and until next time, safe hunting. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by PSE's Carbon Air. Experience performance.